Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Does it feel like everybody's walking around with a bundle of frustration lately? I could tell you, at least on the East Coast of the United States, I just sense everywhere I go, whether I'm driving or walking, so many people are just full of frustration. And I have to admit, I actually had this uncomfortable feeling the other day because I couldn't accomplish a project that I was trying to accomplish on deadline. And I said, what, what's going on here? I feel so not like me. So I did a mind, body, and spirit scan, which I've taught in a prior episode. So you should definitely go back and learn that if you haven't done it yet. And I did one on myself. Where is my body right now? Where am I feeling tension and stress? Do I feel like me? Do I actually physically feel like me? And then I did the same thing for my mind. And then I did the same thing for my spirit. Was I joy filled? Was I angry? What was going on? And I realized I was frustrated. And you know, frustration is very different from full-blown anger. And I wanted to acknowledge that because it wasn't like I was ready to enroll in an anger management class. I just felt a feeling that was different from how I normally feel. And I want you to think about that because it's a precursor and it also has health challenges when you're feeling frustrated. So I just wanted to acknowledge it I figure if it's happening to me, it's happening to other people too. And especially when you're going through cancer treatment, because how many times does the insurance company frustrate us or the nursing staff at the hospital or the doctor or the billing department, the parking attendant? There are so many reasons why we can get frustrated at the medical world. And again, if we can just identify that it's happening, we can stop it from taking a toll on our mind, body, and spirit. I ran across a quote attributed to Kurt Vonnegut. Listen to this. Laughter and tears are both responses to frustration and exhaustion. I myself prefer to laugh since there's less cleaning up to do afterward. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that quote. I also love tears. I think sometimes you just have to get the tears out so you can get to the laughter. But I thought that was really clever. And it's applicable. So let's go back for a second and let's look at how frustration is defined. Because sometimes it gets lumped into anger. It gets lumped into depression. And I want to look at the definition that I felt really captured what I was feeling when I just didn't feel like me. I actually found three different definitions of frustration, and I think they all hit on part of it, at least for what I was feeling. So Oxford says, frustration is the feeling of being upset or annoyed, especially because of inability to change or achieve something. Well, that hit it on the head for me. But then I saw one in Wiki that was a little more upscale, <laughs> and it was frustration arises from the perceived resistance to the fulfillment of an individual's will or goal and is likely to increase when a will or goal is denied or blocked. So yeah, that took it up like a notch. That was another degree of this all. But then I saw WebMD's description. And it said, frustration is an emotional response to stress. It's a common feeling that everyone will experience in their life. 
So all different shades of this, but they all apply. Which one feels most comfortable for you? I liked all of them. That's why I wanted to say all of them. What I really, really thought was cool was a medical explanation of what happens when we're feeling frustrated. Here goes. The adrenal glands flood the body with stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. The brain shunts blood away from the gut and towards the muscles in preparation for physical exertion. Heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration increase, and body temperature rises, and the skin perspires. Now, I caught it before all of that really heavy-duty physical reaction happened, and of course, I caught it before it went to anger. But how many times have you felt a few of those physiological changes And then it was full blown. So I don't like to have those extremes. I like to really know where I stand and where I am in my body, mind, and spirit so that I don't have those whipsaws. One, because it just feels better to live less hysterically. But two, because being a stage four cancer survivor for 31 years, six years misdiagnosed and then 25 years since then when I started treatment and now 22 years since I was actually called cancer free from stage four cancer. I really like to live so that I have the best quality of day. I have the most joy possible and I do the least harm to my body. So when that frustration surge started to build in me, I wanted to acknowledge it and then figure out how to de-escalate from that moment. So look, I think we can all agree that our tolerance for people and situations goes down when we are not getting proper sleep or we're not eating properly and we're experiencing anxiety or depression. Okay, so we know those parameters, right? If we can look at those things and treat ourselves well, and also be very aware of if we're feeling anxious or depressed, we can modulate better how frustration enters and if it starts to get momentum. (laughs) There's so much good humor about frustration, and I'm going to get to that. But I think The value of this podcast, Beating Cancer Daily, is that we look at so many different ways for us to have better nutrition, have better sleep hygiene, how we can use our sense of humor and comic perspective, and so many other strategies to handle depression and or anxiety that might be arising from whatever trial or tribulation we're going through. In my case, it was stage four cancer. And you could be listening to this and you don't even have cancer, but you're using these strategies to just have the best quality of day. So if you haven't heard the hundreds of episodes of this podcast, Beating Cancer Daily, I would urge you to go back and start listening to the ones with Jackie Bryan on nutrition or the comic perspective ones that I do with comedian Missy Hall or the other several hundred that I just do alone where I share the practices that I did going through all that chemotherapy, radiation, and surgeries, and that I still do to today just to stay cancer-free and also have the most rocking day. So just to say one of the humor memes that I found, (laughs) I know this is so bad but so good at the same time, I'm stuck between a rock and someone I want to hit with it. (laughs) playing off the saying, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, which is what often causes frustration, right? You're in a pickle, you're in a hard place, and you can't figure out how to get out of it. But that I'm stuck between a rock and someone I want to hit with it. (laughs) Please don't go hit people with rocks. Let's just deal with frustration. So let's talk about some of the ways that we can 
handle frustration before it mounts or if we sense that we're getting frustrated, how we can de-escalate it. Okay, you know what I'm going to say, right? If you've listened to any of these episodes, for me, humor is a huge superpower and it's used exactly for the situation. So I found a quote that reinforces this by an author and a pastor that I don't know, but I just thought the quote was great. Rick Warren says, a sense of humor is God's antidote for anger and frustration. (laughs) So he's thinking the same way I'm thinking. How can you deescalate frustration? Use your sense of humor. And I'll give you some tips for that. But I think the reason why I get frustrated less and it doesn't last for as long is one, I kind of am taking that scan all the time to just see, am I in a good place? But just having a sense of humor allows you to bat away a lot of life's frustrations that are coming at us morning, noon, and night. So because I get good at what I practice and I practice doing this, it's like a muscle. And I say this many times on these episodes. If you want to get good at practicing not being frustrated, then we've got to practice something that's going to help us mitigate that. And having a sense of humor is going to do it. And actually, not only can you use this with your medical team, with billing people, but sometimes they don't expect it because they expect you to lose your mind and they expect you to be nasty. And so if you hit them with some humor, don't literally hit them. If you say some humor, sometimes it can diffuse the situation and you can actually get what you want. So how many times have people said to you, take a deep breath and count to 10? Well, (laughs) I saw a meme that said, when you get angry, take a breath and count to 10. Throw a punch when you get to eight. Nobody expects that. (laughs) Again, it's terrible. Please don't punch anybody. But just the fact that people are looking at this comedically just makes me so happy because what I try to teach is that when things are getting heated, if you can look at it through a comic perspective, and these people are so generous to share all this humor, I didn't have to write any of it, then this will stick in your head. So imagine that you're in a terribly frustrating situation and you've heard this episode. Just in your head, think, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath and then I'm going to count to 10. But in my mind, when I get to eight, pow, Like you're not going to really hit them, but you're going to think that. And it's really going to make you laugh, at least internally. And nobody ever expects you to laugh when something's getting heated. Or you might think of the other one that I quoted about if you're stuck between a rock and someone you want to hit with it. That might pop in your head. But if you don't fill your mind with these little strategies, then you don't have them to draw from when these situations happen. The other thing you can do is do a roller coaster laugh. Can you imagine? I do this in our live events, our Comedy Cares live events, and the audience loves it. Put your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care because no one will ever expect you to do that. And then just go, ha, 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 ha. So you just start laughing as if you're on the roller coaster and (laughs) it's going down, 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 and then up, 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 and then you just go, woo! (laughs) Can you imagine that? It's so fun to do live with a thousand people in an audience or 10,000 in a stadium. It is so fun. So you can do that in your mind, even if you don't do it physically, or you can say, I'm sorry, I'm just going to walk away for a few minutes and then go in a closet or a bathroom or around the corner and do the roller coaster laugh. It will just shift all your energy 
and it'll help you with the frustrating situation. Of course, you could call the Comedy Cures Laugh Line, one eight 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 ha 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 You could press 1 to hear a professional comedian. You could press 2 to hear an amateur. Or press 3, and you tell me a joke and laugh after you tell the joke. Again, to just de-escalate the frustration. We love box breathing. You can do typical breathing exercises where you breathe in for four seconds. You hold it for four seconds. You breathe out for four seconds. And then you repeat and then repeat and repeat. That can calm you down. Think of your funniest comedian, the comedian that you just love, one of your favorite routines, and play it back in your head. And that can also help you shift the energy around the frustration. Sometimes you just have to state to the person or state to yourself, hey, I'm getting really frustrated about not meeting this deadline. I talk to myself all the time. I've admitted that on many episodes. And then I coach myself through it, either in my own mind or out loud. Okay, Saren, you're getting frustrated about this deadline. It's not doable. We're not going to make it. So let's think of what we need to do next just to de-escalate the situation. Okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk outside. I'm going to get some fresh air. And while I'm outside, I'm just going to relax. And then I'm going to think of what solution that I can do as a workaround right now. And then because I love comedy, I'll watch a funny comedy routine on the internet. And because I'm laughing, my brain gets oxygenated and I see more creative solutions. I really hope you do this. I want to hear if the strategies are helping you. And even just identifying this feeling of frustration before it turns to anger. So if you need more time to just deal with the frustration, there's a great t-shirt that you could purchase online. You could just search it out. It says, not today. (laughs) I think we've all had those days where we just couldn't deal with the world. So for that day, I'd put on the not today t-shirt and everybody knows I have a short fuse. We're just going to take care of this tomorrow. (laughs) So I hope that you have a day with very little frustration. And if you do, some of these strategies help. If you have great strategies that you do to de-escalate your frustration or you have fun humor about it, of course, go to my website, the Comedy Cures Foundation, comedycures.org, and go to the contact menu and write me a note or go to the podcast section and you can just tell me your message right there. Have a blessed day. And I'll see you tomorrow. If you loved today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because Beating Cancer Daily is a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. So if you have some extra change, I'd love you to go to comedycures.org and make a donation today of whatever level is comfortable for you. And it will be tax deductible to the extent allowed by law because Comedy Cures is a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded from my chemo chair, April 1999, and we've been going strong ever since. So please consider making a donation today and help our community and this podcast thrive. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening. See you guys tomorrow.